Whenever I read passages like this, the world will hate you, they will persecute you. Blessed are you when you are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, and so forth. Whenever our Lord say, says those things, I think to myself, was any of the apostles looking at Jesus going, so what's the good news? <laughs> Saint, uh, no, Saint yet, yeah, Fulton Sheen, servant of God, Fulton Sheen, he would often speak about the words of Jesus when he uses the word, the world. He says Jesus in John's gospel uses the word world in two different circumstances. Sometimes he will speak of the world in one way and the world in another. And so you have to listen carefully to what Jesus is saying to see which of the two worlds he's talking about. He says there is the one world that Jesus talks about that he has come to save. When he says God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that all who may believe in him may have life and have it to the full. There is that general understanding of the world Jesus speaks about that he's come to save. The world that he's come to plant his cross upon. The world that he's come to wash in his own very blood. The world that he's, caused, that he's come to give salvation to. To offer redemption to. The world that he has come to to bring into the fullness of his divine love. But then, he also speaks about the world. And when he speaks about this other world, he speaks about the mentality of worldliness. Worldliness. When one does not think along with God, one can become part of worldliness. We talk about this often, someone who is so worldly, right? We speak about someone who's being worldly. We speak about somebody who is investing themselves in things of this earth. All they care about is having money, having houses, having cars, having this, having that, doing the worldly. They don't think about the otherworldly. The, they don't think about the supernatural and the natural around them, right? We speak about somebody who's worldly. We talk about greed, right? A lot of times. Or we talk about consumerism. Someone who has placed themselves firmly only here and now is what matters. That's part of the world that our Lord is talking about when he speaks about when the world hates you. That worldliness, that other world, which is a uh, child, you could say, of the underworld that seeks to attack those who now belong to Christ Jesus. When we speak about this other world that the Lord speaks about today, we speak about a world that does not want confinements on their lifestyle, right? When people are engrossed in sin, they don't want confinements on their sinfulness. And so when Christianity begins to speak about confinements to behavior, the world goes, oh no, <laughs> you can't do that to me. Don't put any confinements on me. Don't tell me something's a sin and I can't do it. <laughs> and so be, they won't want those confinements and so they go after those who might tell them that what they're doing, what they want, is sinful and wrong. And so when one is immersed in worldliness, immersed in that otherworldliness, that underworld of the evil one, one does not want to be told that something is sinful and wrong. We think about the church today and what we have to face in the world today in proclaiming the truth of the gospel. Now before I go on, I would have to say this, that the beauty of the gospel is that it, not that it calls us to a confinement of behavior, but it calls us to uplift the dignity of the human person. There is not one teaching of the church, not one teaching of Christ Jesus, not one moral law of the church that does not uphold the dignity of the human person, the dignity of matrimony, the dignity of human labor, the dignity of sexuality, the, I mean, dignity. Because God dignifies us. It's he who gives us our dignity, gives us our worth. And so when the Lord gives us the moral law, what he's giving to us is our dignity. It does require self-restraint to have that dignity because our passions want to go into everything else whether those passions be greed or envy or lust or sloth or, or wrath, whatever, those things need to be contained and focused and, and 
those sins need to be destroyed in us so that we can reach our dignity. But a world that has immersed itself in that doesn't want those constraints. But in order to receive the dignity the Lord wants of us, it requires that self-restraint. Because the human person was not made for sin. Was not made for that worldliness of the underworld. We were not created for pride. We were not created for lust. We were not created for greed or for envy or for sloth. We were created for intimate union with God, to know God, to love God, to serve him in this world so as to be happy with him forever in heaven. And that's where our dignity lies. We were not created for those seven deadly sins so that when we turn to those seven deadly sins, we actually act against our own dignity. I mean, we act against God. We act against our neighbor. And we act against our own dignity as human persons. And so when Christianity stands against uh, someone who has immersed themselves in the underworld, we're going to receive the hatred of the world. And so in the church today, as the church has to clarify and be very bold about speaking the truth about holy matrimony, that holy matrimony is one man, one woman, period. Man and woman. That is the dignity of the holy matrimony as God has created it. The dignity of life in the womb of the unborn child. That it cannot be destroyed, it cannot be killed. Life begins at conception and must be respected and reverenced to the end until its natural end. Not putting a pillow over grandma's face because you feel bad for her. That's murder. Today, they think it's okay in many states. They may not use a pillow, they might use an injection, but they're saying it's okay. We have to say no, that's against the dignity of the human person. It may restrain somebody's desires, even if their desires are surrounded by false compassion, like I feel bad for grandma, so let me just put her to sleep like I would my dog. But... It's contrary to the dignity of that person. There are many, many moral evils. And the more our world today is turning and embracing moral evils and giving itself back over to those moral evils, turning away from the goodness of God, the graces of God, turning away from that virtue, it's going to turn to more and more hatred to those who remain with Christ and in Christ. If it hates Christ, it will hate us. And if Christ is putting constraints by calling us to deeper dignity, then the world is going to hate him and in turn hate us. So in turn, that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. The church always flourishes when the world is so strongly against it. The church does best under persecution. That's when she's at her best. I don't know if I'm talking in circles this morning or not. (laughs) However, I need to be realistic about the fact of what our Lord says here. No slave is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they'll persecute you. If the world is rejecting Christ, it's going to reject us. If we remain in Christ and with Christ, if Christ remains in us and we are united to him, then the world's going to come against us. It's going to happen. And we should not deceive ourselves to think it's not going to happen. It has been this way since... Jesus Christ first met opposition in his hometown at Nazareth, where they wanted to throw him off the brow of the hill. And so we should not be surprised that when we speak in the name of Christ, when we speak for Christ, when we immerse ourselves in the very life of Christ, when we immerse ourselves in our living part of the true living church of Christ, and we speak boldly the truths of Christ, we are going to receive the same persecution that our Lord Jesus Christ received. The men he's talking to at the Last Supper here, remember Judas already left at this point, they all suffered terribly for Christ. One of them was tied to four chariots, and the chariots sent in four different directions. Bartholomew skinned alive, Jew thrown from the top of the temple, and then beaten with a club. Andrew crucified on an X cross. Peter crucified upside down on the hill, Vatican Hill. All except John 
suffered a martyr's death. John suffered many things, many, many things, but they couldn't kill John, so he wasn't martyred. His martyrdom was having to stand at the foot of the cross with Our Lady and watch her suffer. However, the world did come against John as well. Each of these men ran in fear on Good Friday, rejoiced in the resurrection on Easter Sunday, was strengthened by our Lord on Pentecost Sunday, and each of them gave their lives for Christ, proclaiming the truth of Christ Jesus. Do not be afraid, our Lord tells us. He's overcome the world. It's okay, he tells us. Don't be afraid, he tells us, what they can do to the body. Be afraid of the one who can throw body and soul into the Gehenna. <laughs> be afraid of that one. You know, Don't be afraid of the world. It's going to come at you. It's okay. Remain in love. Remain in truth. Be gentle as doves and as cunning as serpents, our Lord tells us. But do not be afraid. Even when the world comes at us with the full force of its might, it can take nothing from us. And I would close today by thinking about our early Christian brothers and sisters. When the Romans came after them and all various governments came after them to destroy the church in the earliest days for the first 300 years of the church, they threatened them with prison. We'll throw you in prison. My freedom's in Christ Jesus. We'll kill your family. I'll see them in heaven. We'll take your property. My home is in heaven. We'll kill you. Send me home. They were powerless. Powerless. Because the Christians knew that Christ Jesus would give them everything when the world takes what appears to be everything. They had no fear because they remained in his love. The world came after them pretty hard, pretty severe. And yet they stood their ground with gentleness and with joy, even praying for those who were putting them to death, as our Lord told them to. May God bless you and Mary keep.